Hey everyone, this is a review of Milwaukee's M18 Fuel cordless two gallon quiet compressor. It's model number 2840-20. So I'm gonna talk about use cases for this, how it performs, what I like about it, and what I don't like about it. So let's get started. So specifications for this thing, it is a two gallon compressor like I already mentioned. Max PSI is 135. Air output is 1.2 CFM at 90 PSI. Its decibel level is 68 decibels. So that's quiet, it's not ultra quiet. So let's do a quick tour of the compressor itself. Uh, we've got all the controls are in this front right area, which is really nice. Uh, you've got your on off switch, your battery compartment, your pressure regulator, which is just a one, one turn valve. You don't have to wait for uh, another dial to show you the correct pressure. You just set it to what you want and go. You've got the tank pressure right here. You've got your quick disconnect right here and you've got your pressure relief valve here. Now one thing I really don't like about this design is how much lateral play it has when you're connecting the hose. So if you've got pressure in this, you've got to push sideways quite a bit to connect the, the quick disconnect, and you can see how much it deflects when I push. So to, to combat that, just don't have it at pressure when you're connecting this. Just take the regulator, turn it way down, and then plug it in without much force. Um, so the problem with that is this whole plastic housing right here is just connected by these four screws. Um, and you can see there's, there's not really anything structural in here. So when you push it sideways, there's a ton of play in there. And so when you connect, that's an action you're going to be doing. You're going to be pushing sideways on this quick disconnect. Make sure that you've got it at a low pressure so you're not putting a ton of force on that. And then just turn it back up. Now on the other side of the compressor, you've got the two gallon tank with its drain valve right here. It's just a quarter turn valve, easy to operate. So on this end, you've got a grab handle. Um, it's not rubberized, it's plastic, but it's pretty comfortable to hold. On the bottom, you've got rubberized feet for anti-vibration, and these are spaced at the interval where they sit in a packout, but they do not latch into a packout. And I think the reason Milwaukee didn't design this to latch is they were afraid it was going to break the plastic tabs on the top of the packouts due to vibration. Um, so it sits on top of a packout stack but does not lock in. And I think that's on purpose. You can see these feet are definitely not non-marking. Uh, this is just from sliding it around on my workbench. Uh, the rubber definitely marks stuff up. So be careful about that if you're setting it on a place where you don't want to get rubber marks all over the place. Now with the battery compartment up here, I've got a 12 amp hour in there right now. You can see there's a tiny little bit of extra room right here. This takes any M18 battery, so it will run off the two amp hour batteries. Um, just looks kind of ridiculous with that sitting in there, and you're not going to get very much runtime with a two amp hour. I really wouldn't recommend using less than a five amp hour, even though you can run it on these little slim pack batteries. Now one thing to note, when you're putting a bigger battery like this in, do not hold it by the sides. Uh, because the way the roll cage works here, you're going to pinch your fingers right there. Um, so you got to hold it like this or by the tabs. Just don't have your fingers out here because if you're jamming it in there, you're going to really get your fingers. One thing I think that would be a really nice touch is if Milwaukee had taken these rubber feet and went ahead and put them on the back of this too. Uh, I've set this down on concrete a couple times and that's natural because the handle's on the opposite side. So you want to set this side down and then rock it onto these feet. And you can see it's already gotten a whole bunch scratched up. And if you get this too scratched up and you go ahead and put it on a wood floor after having been on concrete, you're likely to scratch a wood floor up. So as far as weight goes, this thing is pretty hefty at 31 pounds bare tool. That's without a battery. Um, if you look at other cordless compressors, it's, it's heavier than pretty much all of them, I think. Um, but if you look at other quiet compressors, it's right in line with most of the two gallon weights. They're all sitting at around 30 pounds. So I, I really think it's, the extra weight is coming from the quiet design, not that Milwaukee just didn't care about the weight when they designed this. Um, it's easy to pick up by the carry handle on the top. This one here, I, I kind of wish they had a grab handle. You can pick it up by this, but it's not balanced. Uh, it kind of flings back on you a little bit. I wish this roll bar was a little bit farther over here, but then it will be on top of all the pressure stuff. So I see why they put it back here. Um, you don't want it covering your control surface and your, your gauge here. Um, but it, it would have been nice if it was a little bit more balanced. So how quiet is this compressor? A lot of the other sound in my videos have, you know, I'm either talking over it 
or it's kind of mixed together. So I'm going to start this and I'm gonna keep talking in my normal voice. My mic's right here, um, just a few feet away from it and you can see how quiet it is. So it's not too bad at all. You can definitely hold a conversation over this thing. Um, if I take a couple steps away, it's, it's even more you know, distinct on how quieter uh, it is when you're just three feet away from it. So it's definitely, it's not super quiet, but it's definitely quiet enough to not be annoying like a really loud compressor is. Let's talk performance. This is mainly meant to be used with brad nailers and finish nailers. Uh, so 23 gauge, 18 gauge, 15 gauge, 16 gauge, in that range. I used this 18 gauge nailer with it and shot as fast as I could. I could not outrun this uh, with the, the brad nailer at 90 PSI. Um, I, I just couldn't. Uh, I could nail all day with that. Uh, eventually the battery would run out, but the compressor could keep up the whole time. And that was only using a five amp hour battery with a high output, it might even be able to do a little bit better. Now, I wanted to really put it to the test. It's not meant to be used with framing nailers, but I decided to do it anyway and see what I could uh, push this thing to do. Um, it actually worked pretty well with uh, 21 degree framing nails. I, I drove a bunch of two inch nails with it uh, and it kept up really well the whole time. I, I timed it so every six seconds, six to seven seconds, I would fire six nails because uh, that's an application for doing slat fencing that I've done before. Um, and that was the, what I was actually able to do between placing the slats and nailing all six of them in, in six spots in rapid succession. Uh, and this kept up with that, with those two inch nails. However, when I moved to three inch framing nails, I could fire three to four, and then the next three to four would always be proud. And that's because of the way the pressure regulator works uh, with cycling on. It doesn't cycle on until it gets down to about 105 PSI. At that point, the compressor will kick on and replenish the tank. So the problem with this is if you want to work at a pressure that's above 105 PSI, and this gun really needs 115 PSI when you're using three inch nails, um, you're not going to be able to work to your full capacity uh, until it cycles back on and replenishes that pressure. So really, for what this was designed for, it works great. If you're doing something at a high pressure that requires to maintain that pressure though, it's not gonna work for that. As far as runtime goes, Milwaukee claims for a 12 amp hour battery, you're gonna get 1600 brad nails. Uh, I did my own test and, and they also claim for a five amp hour battery, you'll get 600 brad nails. So you get a boost in efficiency by using a high output 12 amp hour battery. I did my test using a five amp hour battery. I got 588 brad nails. That's only 12 away from what their stated runtime claims, and they could have been using less than 90 PSI, which is what I was using. So I'm willing to bet they've, they've pretty much nailed their runtime with this uh, as far as I'm concerned. When using my 18 gauge nailer with this, uh, I found I could get about 23 to 24 nails fired at 90 PSI before this would kick back on. And that's using a smaller air hose, that quarter inch, 25 foot air hose. If you're using a longer air hose, like a 100 foot, 3 8 inch air hose, you can get another 0.2 gallons out of this. So you've got a 10% capacity boost in the, the air volume that you're working with if you use a longer hose with this. Now, when I was running flat out, I did notice the, the compressor on that end was getting a little bit warm. And I took a measurement of it. It was 135 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, it's getting pretty warm, but it's not like, you know, burn you hot. So from going completely empty to max 135 PSI, this thing takes just under two minutes. I timed it at a minute and 58 seconds. When it cycles on at 105 PSI and goes back to full pressure, it's right around 30 seconds. I also took this outside and used it to pressurize my car's tires, and it did really well with that. It took it about 16 seconds uh, to go from 25 PSI to 35 PSI, and my Corolla's 195-65 R15 tires. Uh, and that was with me stopping twice to stack the, check the static pressure reading. Uh, so it could have done it even faster if I had just guessed right on how long it would take. It did most of one tire without kicking on too. It only came on really at the very end. So overall, I think this is an excellent compressor. It is amazing for finish work. If you have a whole line of finish guns and you don't want to pay the price for making them all cordless, you can just buy this. Uh, and get by with a little 25 foot hose that doesn't take up much real estate, it's a great option if you've already got a whole bunch of pneumatic nailers. So let's talk price point. 
Right now, the release price on this is $350 bare tool, which is a pretty steep price. I'll go ahead and put a link down in the video description so you can price it yourself in case it drops in the future. But right now, I think the reason Milwaukee came out with this and put it at the price it's at, it's the only cordless quiet compressor I know of. So if you want the luxury of being able to talk while your compressor cycles and also have a cordless model, this is the only one you've got a, you don't have a choice right now. Maybe if there's some more competition in that space, the price will come down eventually. Right now, I think it's going to stay at the premium price tag. So thanks for watching. Hopefully I covered everything you wanted to hear and know. Uh, if there's something you still have a question about, go ahead and drop it in the comments section below. And once again, don't forget to subscribe.